Oh boy. Of course one of these Lollafell has the secret. Remember what I said? You Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. Look in the you. sewers. Snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Is the smell of death so enticing, my fine fellow? <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. Yeesh. You really let me down. What do you mean? You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. The mystery deepens. Hi, welcome in. What did you mean by becoming one myself? Uh, hello? <laughs> it means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. <laughs> but it's a good thing if you ask me. Because... Because I'm getting closer to the truth, right? Oh? Why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets, fool? All part of the act. Fool's bait. The more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. So, now that I've drawn you out... Will you reward me with an answer for my efforts? Why should I help you? It's more Don't fun you that way, right? Right. Descend into chaos. Well, I can make that happen. I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a mute. Did you really mean Robin? Hmm. And what if I say no? Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you. But what difference would it make? Let me tell you something. There were two mutes, but one is dead now. And the other, though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. Now I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed, fool. Right now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth, and the means to expose it. Uh, adventuring, that's like literally the basis of any How mystery. Impressive. That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't learned anything so far. Not exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17, no, 16 system hours. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Well, let me lend you a hand. Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured oh, wow. destruction button. <laughs> wow. I have one okay. just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Penacony will go up in smoke. If you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Penacony, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? Just press the button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, 
Feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care, too. Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. Otherwise, how on earth did you manage to bring it in here? <laughs> I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Pentagoni. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax, the walls will crumble, people will wake up, and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again. When that time comes, go ahead, press the button, Oh boy. With a magnificent fireworks display for me. <laughs> Catch you later, fool. <laughs> You're still talking big. But sure, if that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Just don't let me down now, okay? So, number 35, you're back. Like your new lucky charm. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. <sighs> the guys in black didn't say much. So I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. But I figured you must have had good luck. So I bought you. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. <laughs> are we clear? Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. Go and play a game with them. <laughs> you came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. You're insane. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. But you look good. And that's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now and uh, don't let your master down. How much did you spend? What? My price. How much did you pay... for me? Huh. You really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 Tanba. No more, no less. I'll take my chances. 30 Tanba. If I come back alive, you'll give me 30 Tanba. Deal? <laughs> Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Oh, well, you've got some guts. Yeah, sorry, but uh, that won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. You're not qualified to be at the table. You're just a chip a life thrown away in someone else's hands either you come back with more chips for your master or you never come back it's all or nothing don't embarrass me my lucky hound hmm. 
If you really want to delve deeper into this case, you need to understand the true problem with the family. I guess it's time to tell the story of that Mikhail. You're very perceptive. The Astral Express has received that music box too, right? Do you know the secrets it holds? There's a message. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penicone, and thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? <laughs> That's the exact wording. Hey, why are you laughing? Wait, did you write it? It's quite poetic. No, but I'm the officer in charge of this case, so how could I not know? I'm sure you must have noticed that this message didn't come from the family. You might have even guessed that the relationship between the family and the watchmaker isn't as close as it seems. That's just our speculation. Actually, it's hard to believe that the father of Penicone and its actual managers are at odds. Now I can assure you that your speculation is absolutely correct. The family has considered the Watchmaker an enemy for a long time, but the Hounds haven't been able to track him down, as he seems to be living only in the characters and stories he created. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the family allowed the Watchmaker to send out such a ridiculous message to the outside world? Inviting you here and causing chaos? To find him, of course. So, you want to seize this opportunity to expose the Watchmaker? Well, now you understand why the Oak family authorized the Nameless to assist in the investigation, but kept you in the dark, right? Because the Watchmaker is not the legend of the land of the dreams at all. He's the most shameful stain in the history of Penicone. And he's the root cause of all the anomalies in the dreamscape. You don't get it? Well, I he mean... He is Mikhail. Mikhail? The betrayer of the family? Yep. He's the Watchmaker. Yep. It wasn't until the Watchmaker approached the family with the idea of turning the prison into the planet of festivities that Penicone finally gained its name and glory. <clears throat> Thus... He became known as the father of Penicone. But didn't you say the Watchmaker betrayed the family? And you said you were his companion, so that means you... No. I'm not his companion. But rather one of his many children. But I am indeed a traitor. Not to the family. But to... Mikhail. What did you do? <sighs> I did nothing. And that's the worst betrayal of all. Just like you, I had close companions. We dedicated ourselves to Penicone. But the Oak family, they set us up. Mikhail was too old to protect his children anymore. So we left the family to find our own path. We were branded traitors of the Harmony, even though the true traitors were someone else. While they continue to praise the Watchmaker's name in the world, behind closed doors, they condemn him on a pillar of shame. Nevertheless, we wanted to clear his name. We intended to find the real traitor, the one responsible for all this, and restore Harmony to Penicone. But we failed. Too much time had passed, and the land of the dreams had become deeply corrupted. After countless fruitless pursuits, I gave up. Wow, that's dark. The family accepted me and made me an officer, supposedly as a form of forgiveness. But it was actually a punishment. Since then, I've been completely cut off from my partners and my past. As for Mikhail, I heard he died in obscurity, in a place where no one could find him. That's when I realized that the Penicone I once knew would never return. 
We're truly sorry for what happened. But this is not the end of the story, right? Hmm. Apparently, someone has inherited the title of the Watchmaker, and has been secretly working against the family all this time. Well, that's one way to look at it. However, only one member has truly inherited the Watchmaker's title. Unfortunately, after all these years, I have no idea who that person is, or if they're even real. Or just Mikhail's lost soul haunting the dreams. So, do you understand why I'm spilling all this info? Because I believe the girl's death must be connected to the Watchmaker's legacy. And at the end of all these mysteries, we will find the answers we are seeking. What is it? No, nothing. Maybe I'm just overthinking things. <laughs> uh, hello. This traitor really exists. Yes, of course. Could they be responsible for Firefly and Robin's deaths? People getting it. Perhaps that's why Sunday is taking this matter so seriously. People came into stuff they shouldn't be, that's all be aware of. Nothing more noteworthy. <clears throat> Before coming here, I had all sorts of scenarios in my head about dealing with the family. I did not expect an empty mansion. Watch out. Someone's approaching. I don't think trespassing on forbidden areas is the way to be a guest, Mr. Yang. And... Acheron? The Galaxy Ranger? Our apologies, Mr. Sunday. Uh, nobody came to greet us, so we entered without permission. I hope you can forgive us. But even if there's no one to greet you, you should wait for the host. Don't you agree? Even without the famous Galaxy Ranger. As far as I know, the crew has officially accepted the family's commission. So coming here will be unnecessary for you. On the contrary, that's exactly why we're here. To ask you about the case and gather more information. We don't want any loose ends. Hmm. Well, since you've come with goodwill, I have no reason to show you the door. Rest assured, he hasn't figured out that we went through those documents. Well, if you're whispering that to me right now in front of him. Truth remains a mystery. I'm getting close to it. I assure you that the traitor will soon pay the price. Let's hope justice will prevail soon. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. How did the family come to the conclusion that the murderer was <clears throat> within the family? With all due respect, it's in the IPC's interest to wreak havoc before the Charmony Festival, and the family has every reason to suspect the IPC's involvement. Well, other family heads share the same suspicions as you, but in my opinion, the true murderer would never have drawn as much attention as that ambassador did. Not to mention, I personally shackled him a while ago. Mm. However, I'll give you a suggestion regarding your suspicions, Mr. Yang. You should be more cautious of Aventurine. While the wicked can't break through high walls, they can plunge their evil dagger into the heart of the righteous. Uh... He's a businessman, <clears throat> some philanthropist. You, but sir, right now, he's out there are just as bad. His wealth on the streets. And he went to the Clock Studios theme park all by himself. Who knows what kind of scheme he's cooking up. While the family is dedicated to keeping our guests safe, it might be wise for you to stay alert. This guy's... Yep. What unexpected troubles could arise. Wow. Veil According threats. According to a Pierpoint hotline tip, there was a major breakthrough in the shocking Ejhazio Aventurine case. The suspect has been arrested. This fraud case has been linked to many departments within the Interastral Peace Corporation and the Intelligentsia Guild, causing a large drain in manpower. Wait, and what? Did he get? No, right? Loss. 
the case's main suspect originates from Sigonia 4 and is one what of is going on right now second extinction event <clears throat> as a scapegoat I guess right an interstellar refugee travel permit as per strategic investment department head diamond sentiments the IPC has appropriately relocated the suspect in the spirit of the charter what pretty eyes tell me oh Lord. Do they shine in the dark? Well, if they did, I'd sell them in a heartbeat. You don't know how many people long for your eyes to be closed forever. As a servant, you should not resist your master. Yet, you went and killed that man anyway. No lawyer has the audacity to defend you. Perhaps you ought to represent yourself. Not difficult, but definitely pointless. You're pretty confident on your eloquence. Did you also think that when you lied to the Intelligentsia Guild? <clears throat> you ask and you shall receive. You wanted the perfect construction material. All I did was offer a possibility. It was just a small wager. If your luck holds out, the IPC will dig something up from the golden sands of Ejihazo. Maybe even the Sand King's remains. Pity your luck has run out. I'll admit that. What I'm more curious about, though, is why such a grand scheme failed to benefit anyone in the end. Including the perpetrator himself. Madam, I already have what I want. To be brought before you for the next high stakes gamble. Then let's talk about the second gamble. Tell me, what are you prepared to wager this time? My life. <laughs> I bet you won't send me to the gallows. What do you want, then? I want your Lenore to meet with me. I have something to say. And then what? I want cash. <laughs> it can't be that simple, can it? It is that simple. Thirty tonbas. The remainder of my... Market value. Thirty tonbas. No more, no less. With this money, I'll climb to even greater heights than you. Grasp even more riches than you. <laughs> I wager you won't give me this chance. Which is why you should call him here. Interesting. A pity Diamond won't see you. No one gets to see him. From here on out, I am Diamond's representative. And I will decide on his behalf. Sure. You're wrong. 30 Tonbas. He'll give you that. And much more than that. Wealth. Status. Power. The IPC will give you whatever you want, even what you don't want. Kakavasha. <laughs> A good name, but unfortunately destined to be buried in the dirt. You, though, you deserve to live, to create even more wealth for us. Go. Pick the clothes you like. Then choose your desired identity. And then... <laughs> use them well, child. May your plans never suffer failure. Yeesh. Life is like a long-term investment. Those who choose correctly, do the correct things, reach the correct outcomes, and show the world their value. 
people can't always make the right choices in their lives. But luck has always been on my side. I've never lost. Is it because Gyathra blesses me? <laughs> if that's the case, she must also be looking upon me right now. My success is inevitable. But... What then? <laughs> Even if I overcome this difficult trial... What would come next? <laughs> what awaits me after this glorious gamble? An even more glorious one. Will I return triumphant with unending riches after countless successes, or... Will I encounter failure, never to return? I'm pretty sure you already have some idea, lowly gambler. <laughs> what? Silver Wolf? Am I dreaming? Or have I gone completely insane? Perhaps both. You've forgotten me already. When you were strapped to that electric chair, maybe not. By a mannequin warlord, who was it that gave you the idea? Fine. I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. Get out of my head, newborn of the Harmony. <laughs> the Harmony? Oh, don't play the fool. It's not the first time we've met. No need to be so polite. I'm you, and perhaps even more aware of yourself than you. Of what exactly you want. You're dying. And you still want to drag a bunch of unfortunate fools with you through death's door. That's why you're here, isn't it? <laughs> a grand unveiling. You really think you can pull it off? <laughs> why not? Well, you may have fooled everyone, but you can't fool yourself. I can show you. Before you're entirely gone. I'll be with you for the last stretch of your road. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart while we walk. <laughs> what exactly are you? <laughs> Most people in this world spend their entire lives just to reach one outcome. <laughs> and I am that outcome. Kakabasha, I am your future. <laughs> First, I'm hearing things, and now I'm seeing them. <laughs> Great. Am I going to be elevated into the Harmony's Emanator next? Only on Panacone, am I right? <sighs> what are you still doing here? Well, you've known all along. The family truly showed leniency to everyone who came seeking help. Why would there be a need for such high walls? You must be like that. Which is why. To the hotel, you remove your high hat and beg everyone. Well, when you put it like that, even Ratio's a teeny peacock analogy sounds pleasant. Well, you know how rare it is for me to give you the straight dope. So listen while you can. It's good timing that you mentioned the doctor. I'm especially fond of what you and he have in common. The one everyone thinks this way. <laughs> Go on, tell me I'm right. You know who you really are, Mr. Cavalier Gambler. <laughs> they only see your big bets, your bravado, the full house. It's a heck of an act. No one. Well, the best way to prevent others from seeing your true colors is first being able to fool yourself. <laughs> of course. For the preservation. <laughs> oh, I thought you knew. Didn't you say you had me pegged? War done. It well, it's not going to be me, anyway. <sighs> mm, your expression right now is hard to put into words. The lucky charm Mama left you is made from gold. Why did you never consider selling it? You obviously could have lived a normal life like Big Sis that way. Looking back, that was the better choice. Man, this guy's Mama a little, left you us know? With two pieces of jewelry. A necklace and a lucky charm. 
There won't ever be a third piece. Uh, that's what you always say, but you actually regret it, don't you? <laughs> that you didn't, somehow. You can zip it if there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> I know. You must remember what Big Sis told you. The words still ring in your ears, don't they? You're a good kid, so you definitely won't have forgotten. So, you surely won't forget how tragic her last moments of life were. How the piercing laughter behind you felt like it was drilling into your heart. Did it? Yes. A lifelong regret, indeed. Enough! Do you not have anything better to talk about? Oh, shut me down like a champ! I think I finally get you. <laughs> Woo! You are nuts! In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death. <laughs> think about it. There's a Stellaron in play. The fabulous Robin loses her voice. Two unsolved murders. Cryptic messages from a masked fool and a chance to go head-to-head -head with Sunday himself. I don't know why, mister, but you always give me a special feeling that makes me more curious about you. It's sad that I can't get to know you more. We have to say goodbye. Did you have fun? Mm. You're... going back? Yes. I should go home. The day's getting dark, and it's going to rain. I don't want to worry the others. Your home. Where is it? What a strange question. It's where Papa, Mama, and Big Sis are. In this dream. <sighs> this amusement park. This beautiful dream. They really are peaceful. Everyone loves it. <laughs> but, mister, why don't you like it? <laughs> because they're not here. Where are they then? I don't know. You do know. But there's no point pressing the issue. <laughs> Admit it. You're tired. We all. Which is why we chose to stay here. Me and him. Your past and future. How long will you stay? Forever. We'll be with you forever in this dream. This is the greatest honor that we can offer to those who hurtle towards death. <laughs> The road less traveled is less traveled for a reason. You've never gone in any other direction. Your own life is the chip you're most eager to lay down. Always has been. You don't care who the real murderer is. And the watchmaker's so-called legacy couldn't be more boring. What you want, what you need, is to be the smooth operator. Solid gold deal maker who doesn't waste a drop of sweat, even when he's up to his neck in danger, deep inside family territory. You want to be polished up, cuffed with red hot chains in spotless center stage. <laughs> You'll be the closing act, the final. I can do it. And it will be flawless. Ugh, of course you can. Your luck will help you at the right time. Stop.
Acceleron and an emanator. It's that simple now. That way, the IBC will earn a place at the table. And as for you, you'll just have to slip the leash, sweep the rat race, extract yourself from this endless debacle. You'll have the freedom you've always dreamed of. <laughs> this isn't the first time. You've been an escape artist from day one. This fiasco started with a death, and its curtains will fall on another death. Oh, so that's why Diamond chose you. He's just after Panacone. No matter the means, no matter the price. It's not personal. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Well, don't get soft on me now. <laughs> what, did you suddenly grow a conscience? Why, I was born from yourself. I'm well aware that climbing out of the hole you've dug is basically impossible. I can't stop you from doing what you want. I can't change where you want to go. Well, what's done can't be undone. All we can do is play the cards we're dealt and rake in as much time as possible. Yes. Alas, people won't make all the right choices in their lifetime. The luck always seems like it's on your side. You will keep winning, having never lost before, but why you? Why? Must it be you? If all your luck is built on the pain of someone you love, on the loss of dozens more. If these windfalls, these jackpots, aren't a gift from Gyandra, if all they are is a long string of meaningless deaths, then what did we do to deserve living in a world like that? <sighs> maybe... Maybe when I get to where I'm going and look back, I'll know what the trip was all about. when you're taking a photo the next time. Your expression will look more natural. Sure, I will. Then, mister, are you going back too? I can't leave yet. I still have a show to do. Oh. You're about to go on stage, aren't you? Let's go then. I'll take you to the stage. <laughs> sure. Behind this curtain is the grand stage. Almost time to go on stage. Are you ready? Good luck with your show. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> you still seem pretty nervous. Let's put our palms together. If you receive Gyathra's blessing, you'll feel more relaxed. Putting our palms together is a simple ritual. By putting our palms together and reciting the prayer to Mama Funga, she will bless us. If you're not familiar, I can guide you. It's all right. I know how to do it. Of course I know. This is where we go our own way, Kakavasha. The catechins are coming. Why? The catechins have already taken all our money, food, and they killed our parents! What more do they want? 
Americans are bloodthirsty, cruel, <clears throat> and insatiably greedy. They want everything only to end up with nothing. This is a trick, an act of revenge, remember? Today is the day of the Kakava, and also your birthday. They know the Abjin will surely hold a festival today. With the aid of this ring, they will come to destroy our wagons and take everything they want. But little do the Catechins know, this time, we will fight back. The men in black that descend from the skies are on our side. I can stand no chance against them, and will surely pay for their arrogance. Without this rain, the Catechins would never take action, and we would not have the chance to turn the tide. This is a gift from Gayathra, and you are Kakavasha, whose good fortune will bless your sister with success. always return their blood debts. Gayathra calls for me, but Papa and Mama are waiting for me. I must answer the call. But she will bless you with good fortune and help you survive. As long as you are alive, the blood of the Avgen will never run dry. So run, Kakafasha. Do not be afraid. And do not look back. Go to the other side of the mountain. The rain will accompany you. And the rain will bless you. As for us, we will reunite in Kakava's next aurora. May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Keep your blood eternally pulsing. Let your journey be forever peaceful and your schemes forever concealed. Farewell, Kakavasha. Newsflash from the Inter-Astral Peace broadcast. The IPC Marketing Development Department spokesperson confirms that a small-scale rebellion has broken out in the unclaimed region of Sigonia. The situation is now under control. The insurgents are from a local clan known as Kataka, which has a long history of disdain towards the IPC. This has caused a serious negative impact to the work of the IPC's marketing development department. The clan launched a massive attack on the Avgen, who were under the protection of the IPC, resulting in 6,728 deaths and 3,452 missing. The casualties are currently under the care of the frontline trauma team. The spokesperson expresses his deepest condolences for this devastating humanitarian disaster. At the same time, delivering an important message on this matter to all interplanetary citizens. Finally, he proclaims, the hammer of preservation will fall on all beings, regardless of life or death, regardless of race, regardless of ideology, to uphold the basic rights we inherently possess. Kakavasha? This act is dedicated to you. I hope it'll be an unforgettable memory for you. Kakavisha. By the way, before you go, I have a personal question. You... Do you truly want to destroy the world with your own hands? Let's assume, just assuming now, 
that every time I roll the dice, there's a possibility of achieving this particular outcome, then I would be quite happy to make that wager. Wow. Crazy. Is this Miss Acheron? Hello, I'm Imigo, the Astral Express's navigator. Hello, I'm March 7th. I'm sure he needs no introduction, as you definitely know him. You can call me Clocky. Hello? None of you seem surprised by my arrival. Since Weld has decided to travel with you, it means that he trusts you. And we trust his judgment. <laughs> I envy your close friendships. Miss Acheron here doesn't present a danger, and she's of no threat to the Astral Express. Aventurine's prior accusation was based on nothing more than his own subjectivity. Which is why, before we continue working together, he has a duty to explain himself. You want to... create a situation where all three parties are present? There must be some deeper meaning behind Aventurine's actions. I suspect he's been aware of Panacone's secret from the beginning, and has been continuously strategizing to unveil it. In that sense, the Astral Express's role in his plans would be imperative. In the worst case scenario, he may use us to do something unexpected. Assuming things do escalate to that stage, having an extra ally is a good insurance policy. Penacone has numerous factions, and the state of affairs is significantly more intricate than that of Bellabog and uh, Xianzhou. We must meet out justice for the, you know. You're talking weird again. <laughs> but it's a good vibe. It's like, ah, that's all right. no we can't ignore the safety of Penacone. To solve the mystery of the Watchmaker, it is crucial to get the IPC's intel. The path ahead is fraught with danger. But what's trailblazing without a little danger? Sounds like we've reached a consensus. I will accompany you, of course. Let's move out then! No need to rush. If he truly has laid a trap, he will definitely use every means to lure us in. Look, should both the performers and spectators fail to arrive, won't all of Aventurine's plans be for nothing? Let's get going, everyone. The hour of trailblazing is upon us. To solve the mystery of the Watchmaker, it is crucial to get the IPC's intel. The path ahead is fraught with danger. But what's trailblazing without a little danger? Let's get going, everyone. The hour of trailblazing is upon us. Let's get going, everyone. Oh, I have a bad feeling that something big's gonna go down. Oh, are you ready? Let's waste no time and head to the theme park then. Mr. Yang. Hmm? Why did you not tell your companions about my true identity? It's just like you said uh, an inability rather than an unwillingness. Plus, it's a long story. Something that can be summed up in a few words. But I chose to believe you, and my trust in you stems more from my own personal judgment. I also believe that if it were their choice to make, they would make the same one. Thank you. I'm grateful. To reciprocate. 
in the upcoming confrontation. If the odds aren't in the Astral Express's favor, Ooh. I will stand with you. Damn. If my meager strength is required. We're back here again. Aventurine actually chose a really conspicuous location. Uh, that guy's really taking it to a whole new level. Does he really think he's a superstar or something? Not a soul in sight. The hounds drove out the visitors, and now their whereabouts are unknown too. Everyone, pay attention. The other party has obviously come prepared. Astral Express, we are late, and this, unsung gifts. We've kept your appointment, Mr. Aventurine. It is customary to show yourself as well. Mom, you look, I'm on TV. <laughs> Let me remind you that in all likelihood, this stage and his identity have nothing to do with the wanted murderer. Oh, no, they do. Uh, of course they do. Otherwise, why would I work so hard to gain your trust and then invite you all here? Because he's the only one who saw all three homicides. He is the key to proving that the family's death that does not exist in Drain's promise is nothing but a sham. Three homicides? That's right, madam. The third one is about to happen right now, right here, in Clock Studios theme park. A truly grand death. You. going to die. And it's all because of Mr. Stellar. You will become the personification of death. <laughs> oh, don't underestimate the preservation. The cornerstone of the Amber Lord will surely guide me. Let me be a little I will detonate the Stellaron in you and cause a teeny tiny accident on Panicoe. Bang! The entire theme park will be reduced to a shattered dream. Then, before the family can even react, I'll become the IPC Queen's navigator. Your bluff isn't fooling anyone. If you could really do that, you would have done so earlier. You want to bet? <laughs> sure. I'll bet with you. I'm betting that it'll be a sweeping victory for me. By detonating an unprecedented explosion to prove that the vow of harmony is a complete and utter joke. You won't do it. Mm. <laughs> Sun could not kill me, and 
the quicksand sent me back to the embrace of the guild and the IPC. Bear in mind, my victory wasn't just a stroke of luck. No. I've never been defeated. Have you ever heard the saying, sleep is the rehearsal of death? Why do the living sleep? Oh, because we are not ready for the final rest. Every night is practice for the end. You and I are escaping into our dreams for fear of death at this very moment. And death will serve us in our dreams. Friends, the game has commenced, and you cannot choose to decline. Nor do you have any reason or crap to... Dice are cast. Ladies and gentlemen, ready to unveil your cards? The architect's flawed stone. <laughs> of no value at all. I'm putting down the bet. I'm taking the gamble. I'm claiming the win. Fates the wheel, a daring gamble, walking the brink of death for rebirth. Oh. Okay, let's give this a try. What? <laughs> She's like, just give her it all. She's like, I got this, guys. Don't even worry about it. Hi, Roller Pushwan. <laughs> Let's go. So broken. All things in this world have their laws. Humanity's creation. What a headache. <laughs> 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 Needs optimizing. <laughs> this is double speed. Goodness 
Welcome in, Steve! We're doing a boss battle. Okay. Two are gonna get hit. Nine is really high. What a headache. That's super annoying. Can I have fun this time for a buzz? The only one who's gonna get past that is Fushuan. Because she can hit all four. Bushman's not even gonna get past us either because we won't be able to do that. Zila might be able to get through. Nice. Zila's exempt. Keep counter healing, I guess. Nice. Okay.
I'm not gonna roll a six, right? Oh, <laughs> Lynx! Lynx! What a boss! Roll the six! I gotta get him to miss his turn. Nice. Okay, cool. Nice links. Uh, uh, we're almost done. We're like on the verge. Links and uh, links and Silver Wolf aren't marked yet, so. Pass through the place you mentioned. Pinnacle, what do you hope to find within a dream? I'm not looking for anything. They aren't in a dream. Hmm. I'm afraid the family will not open the doors for you. Why? Because the path you walk is not accepted by the harmony. Even if that's not what I want. Precisely because it's not what you want. Because they are not like other Eos. They have never glanced at anyone. And they never need to. They leave woven strands of fate for humans to walk and to 
together, they weave a great shadow. And this shadow silently envelops them. There are always those who rise from the shadows. Mm -hmm. They mostly become a part of the shadow. In your eyes. Am I the same? You still have a strand of color, but not much. <sighs> that is enough. Before they vanish completely, I will reach the Nihility's end. Oh, not what I was expecting. <laughs> Damn, well, Himiko, we're gonna risk it all. Did you see those two? Oh my gosh, right? It never rains in Penacani, but today it does. But it rains for adventuring. Right? What is this place? Uh, oh my gosh. A gigantic black hole. And see. That's so wild, because, like, anyway. Have I... Have I succeeded? Feeling lucky. Welcome to this sad world, Kakabasha. Your good luck is the most precious wealth we all Abjin have. You came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. Wealth, status, power. The IPC will give you whatever you want. As for us, we will reunite and Man. next Aurora. No, he's dead. Man. That was his form of freedom, I guess, right? It's a pity this is not the place you were expecting. Nility, is it? Perhaps to you, I am just an emanator who's hiding her identity. But the sleeping and shapeless never glance at anyone. They have no face, no form. And even less of a will to speak. The Nihility envelops everyone equally. Only some who have gone under their shadow can go farther, tainting themselves with more Nihility. That's all. <laughs> That's all. My friend, you really leave me at a loss for words. So. Is this my final destination? The land of the dead? This is all but a fleeting dream. One of the thousands of manifestations of Ajax. Under the watchful eye of Nihility, we momentarily linger here before moving on to our own paths. It seems that my death has already been determined. Even if you wish for it. I can't promise you anything. Now that you've accomplished your goal, I think you can be a little more forthcoming. <laughs> what do you mean? 
Your performance at the theme park was wonderful and grandiose. A simple yet practical technique that fooled almost everyone. No one would have ever thought that you would have gone to such lengths. Even staking your life just to prove a fact that had seemingly been disproved long ago. Real death does not exist in Penacony's dreamscape. <laughs> Why would I do this? Wow. Because this is the only way you can uncover a secret that is even more unspeakable than the serial murders. To use this dream death to get there. To that promised land people constantly seek in this grand gathering. Penacony. The legacy of the Watchmaker. The true land of exile. What a big brain move, man. How did you find out? I never imagined that's like getting to learn if the afterlife exists without having to have the penalty of death to it. everything it's our stellar on friends identity isn't it I see you're in the know let's just say I'd put money on the possibility the murder isn't nearly enough to disrupt business as usual even if there were one or two murders on Penacony most people wouldn't be personally affected and that won't create any waves. This dream of theirs isn't a boundless sea. It's a lonely island. The family used the harmony to build a high wall and isolate them from the vast and treacherous ocean of the outside world. That barrier they build keeps death out. But it also keeps the secrets that are lost in that watery abyss from floating to the surface. In a beautiful dream, free of suffering. Who would want to go fishing for those secrets? No one. Unless... Unless someone goes to the other side of the barrier. And lives to tell the tale. Someone already has. I got the idea early on, chewing on that masked fool's little hint. If a mute isn't someone who cannot make a sound, then it has to be someone who cannot speak. Someone who survived the treacherous depths, but is unable to take the stage and speak the truth. <laughs> well, I'm happy to know she's safe and sound, and still on Penacony. Wow! Hint. Is that not proof? Well, proof is the one thing I don't have. The only thing that can prove these conjectures is for the family to come clean. And with the way they buttered up these outsiders, uh. it seems pretty clear they're intent on covering their tracks. But you don't need proof to have a suspicion. And for me, suspicion is enough. I didn't need to find the memory zone meme. I just needed for someone to kill me like it killed that silver-haired girl. You don't sound very confident to me. Going out of your way to make citywide broadcasts in an attempt to involve more people. <laughs> you are simply betting on the possibility of someone being able to break down the barrier. You're very lucky that fate has decided to let us cross paths. <laughs> I happen to be equipped with a very sharp blade. Sharp enough to slice through the veil of dreams. I can also carve the Harmony's brand off of you. You possess great cunning. Deliberately setting us up to be on opposing sides. Constantly repeating the words of the Emanator in front of others. Leaving me no choice but to draw my blade against you. And that's how you win. Opportunity and strategy. Both are essential. And in your plans, the IPC always wins. Even if you lose the bet. To the family, the life of an ambassador is still invaluable. Well, it's a huge gamble, isn't it? But allow me to point out a mistake. The IPC's success is not guaranteed. I, unfortunately, have no contingencies for such an important matter. Detonating a Stellaron. I can't do it. The Aventurine Stone is too broken to even safeguard my escape from the stage. 
If, at the end of the day, you did not unsheath your blade, I would have lost the bet. It is pointless to discuss what-ifs. You have won. Your prize is an entry ticket into that deep sea. And after this, whether you can return from the abyss is another gamble of yours. Are we talking about the same deep you sea as... Waver. Well, <laughs> deep sea? Of course I have. But I can only bank on my own good fortune. Because other than that... I have... Wake up from this dream and go to where you should be. Your gamble is not over yet. <laughs> Before we part, can you answer one more question? As someone who has traveled on that road, can you tell me, why are we born into this world, if it's just to die? I don't think this, and never have. Nor do you. But the nihility envelops you and I. And everyone. And because of that, it's pointless. But it is still there. If the dice of fate are always weighted, then that is our destiny. Why, then, do we struggle against it? My answer might not be able to resolve your confusion, because it has been with you throughout your journey and is already a part of your life. But you said, Sleep is the rehearsal of death. So why does life sleep? Because we are not ready to welcome death. So you can definitely understand why we want to be prepared. Even if the ending has been predetermined, that's fine. There are countless things that humans cannot change. But before the end, there are many things that humans can do while on their journey. And because of this, the end will thus reveal a completely different meaning. Take a good look at your pocket. Your friend has already given you the answer. Good luck. This is why I get so confused. They give me sad moments, like with Firefly, and then they give me brilliant moments, right? The impossible in the dreamscape is not death, but rather dormancy. If you stay alive, I wish you the best of luck. Because they have brilliant moments like this. <sighs> then I shall get going. Mister? You're leaving? You ultimately chose to... Leave this dreamscape? Yes. Because they are not here. My papa, mama, and big sis. Then where are they? They are in a place where everyone will go. A very, very distant place. Then are you going to? I'll get there one day. But not now. There will come a day when the sky will drizzle, and I will hear the call of Gyathra Triclops, and know that it is time for me to go, and be reunited with my family. So, until that time comes, I should be preparing. Preparing? For what? Well, preparing to face them, Kakamasha. And to make them proud. Hmm. I know you'll be able to do it. Good luck. 
Of course. For I am a child who received the blessing of Gyathra Triclops. <laughs> but you still seem nervous. <laughs> well, I seem that way because I am nervous. You know what? Maybe you can help. What do you say? One last time? Put our palms together? <laughs> Are you going now? Yes. May the Mother Goddess thrice close her eyes for you, keeping your blood eternally, eternally pulsing. May your journey be forever peaceful, and your schemes forever concealed. Our paths will cross again beneath Kakava's shimmering auroras. Farewell, Kakava Chef. Jeez, what a story! With hope nestled in my heart, I descended to slumber of the night until the denouement of all coming morrows kisses me and I have embraced the quiet dead. But this man is not different. He lives and breathes in the present. In every sinking night, by every darling, daring gamble, the vision of morrow ever graced his dreams. His life knows no quietude. His fate yet demands him to win them all, to weather tempests one after another, to admire and shrouds his very breath. And now in the unfathomable depths of dream, the once falling die has at last landed on its earthly rest. The light of the Aventurine Stone has disappeared. This only represents one outcome. He kept his promise and got what he wanted. <laughs> As planned, your cornerstone has been successfully sent to the family's territory. Then... Let's fulfill our duty and start harvesting. Oh, wow. I come for an audience. I come to fill wine. And I come to claim. I bestow poison in the guise of sweet dew. Come the toil of spring and yield a fall. I patiently wait for the branches to be heavy with withered fruits. All for the Amber Lord. Wow. And whose point of view is this? <laughs> right? Mm, I think it's very different, right? With Topaz, she imposed her own beliefs on other people, right? It's it's very different, and I sort of have the same belief as a person. It's very different being strong in what you believe in, but it's very different imposing things on others. So for Topaz, she thought that because of what she went through, that it gave her validation to impose a choice on others that they didn't choose themselves the lack of freedom while adventurine while adventuring did manipulate people too like topaz did adventuring did it with the outcome knowing it would affect him personally only directly right um yeah i get that but there's two different types of kindness right Adventuring is looking at kindness towards himself to break free of, of a position of a, a life where it hurt others. So it's weird because there's this crazy dichotomy of like adventuring being selfish, but it not hurting anybody. While Topaz 
was selfless by working to save Bellabog, but hurt people, right? So there's like this weird dichotomy of like good intentions, you know? So it's very interesting to bring that debate up because they're both basically polar opposites of each other, both with different intentions and then the end result uh, of the way that things played around and how people got involved and what happened to them were complete opposites. So I think it's very interesting to have that discussion. Uh, whether they're right or wrong, that totally depends upon your point of view and perspective. Um, but yeah, it's still wild. <laughs> it's definitely wild, right? You know? Mm. We say that, but it's like saying somebody hurt somebody that you care about, like severely, right? I I disabled, impaired, perhaps death. Would you still forgive that person for what they did knowing their backstory, right? Again, that's that's sort of trying to say that a victim, whether you're a victim of a circumstance or not, whether or not the choices that you make are, are valid against another person. And, and again, it's all perception, right? So, like, some people feel like Topaz isn't valid because those are her own experiences that aren't applicable to others, right? Um, but... But that's just with life in general, whether it's through storytelling or not, is what makes it interesting. We all have these different lenses of what is appropriate and what is not based off of our own morals and values and our life experiences. And that's why life lesson, the only lesson that you can take away, if I could ever impart a lesson to anybody in life, is that's why you keep your, your heart and your mind open. You don't have to agree with someone, but by understanding them and understanding where they come from, you can at least see that reasoning and make better determinations, right? Um, unfortunately, not everybody is able to view each other that way, and not everybody is able to... Uh, not willing to impart that information, right? So sometimes we're in games we're privy to those things, while in real life we may not be able to see those things unless somebody is being forthright and telling us. We have the fortunate happenstance of being able to see these inner thoughts and inner workings of these characters but in life you don't necessarily get that so what happened memories you surface yes fire him go shoot and brace i think someone saved me you're awake sam i've been waiting on you for quite a while sam we were having an important discussion just now Just what's uh, happening here? Crevice between dreams. You've met me before. I'm Sam, a Stellaron hunter. I originally planned on showing up earlier to reveal some truths. To oh you. boy, Sam. But I encountered more roadblocks than expected. Eleven times I've tried, but ended in failure. Before I knew it, this was the script and I Elio. Too intertwined, and it became too difficult to escape the constraints of the script. Elio is right. In this land of the dreams, you and I will reap unforgettable gains. Ugh, man. I don't know people's hearts as well as he and Kafka do. Nor do I have a specialty like Silver Wolf and Blade. Most of the things that I'm good at only apply to villains who need no mercy. So, there is only one method that I use. This is to show you. Oh. Oh. Labyrinth-like corridors and halls, traps everywhere. The owner of this mansion must be a bit paranoid. I'm so confused because 
Sam, I thought was Sampo, which is not Sampo, which is not Firefly. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, they talked about that. That's why he. That's why. That's the whole point of Adventuring's thing, right? Adventuring wanted to see if it would stick, and that was why he had that big brain play because he gets to experience the deep sea without having to actually die, right? So that was the whole point of that. Ugh, big brain play. <laughs> you are so funny. I like Mr. Adventuring Spirit a lot. Officer. I hope that sense of humor of yours has helped you find the serial killer. Just expressing a personal opinion. Why? Did I hit a nerve? Mr. Gallagher, my patience is wearing thin. Neglecting duties will only make me more suspicious that you and the real serial killer are connected. <sighs> Scoundrel, punk, drunk, hooligan. How does any of this, this matter? It's the bird, by the way. But I have never once Whoever the bird that belongs to that's been watching them. I, I take back what I said. You're probably oh, man. You're just crazy, you know? Lunatic. You, the family, you broke my spine and pulled out my fangs, and now you want to accuse me of murder? Ridiculous. Only idiots who've drunk too much soul glad will berate a stray dog in the streets. What exactly is making you say all this nonsense? You should be more concerned about the outworld visitors who are making a scene in the theme park than me. I don't need you to remind me. Once that ambassador walks through the doors of the mansion, I will know what he wants. My servants see everything. His little magic tricks may have fooled me, but no matter. I'm happy to see how it's turned out. Why do you think that I just let him go? And why do you think I emptied the theme park stage? Because my target from the beginning has always been you, Hound. The more noise he makes, the more opportunities I have to make you and your true master pay in blood. If I were really the murderer, why would you need to be so secretive? Ha! Huh, I forgot. You also have a difficult master to serve. Telling you to ignore the murder case and focus solely on that Charmony festival. Isn't that right, my brother? <sighs> Looks like your disguise has helped you successfully understand every facet of the family. Disguise? You must be blind to be accusing me of being a fake. Open your eyes, take a good look. <sighs> Indeed, every part of you is real. The brown hair, soft and curly like Benny's. The orange eyes, which make me miss the gaze of Sir Whitaker. That odd scar. The mark oh, of fashioned the together. Oh. Tie, hound emblem. Oh, wow. Bell, the bartending and your role as a security officer. These are all true traits from all 52 loyal family members. Yeesh. When they are gathered, countless tiny truths are woven together into a lie. You collected a small piece. That's of so each smart. Of them and claimed them for yourself. Then you invented this facade. A complete Gallagher. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> you have guts, I'll give you that. Not bad. I severely underestimated you. That's a little like Admirable. obsessive. So what? You know to notice all that? Prove that I murdered your sister and that stowaway. This proves that you and the memory zone meme death are linked. Well, but we knew that already, though, right? So listen up. I don't care how you did it. 
I only care about one thing. The he just wants to, to know question. if Robin's alive or not. You devil. You wretched, despicable dog. Why did you kill her? Am I wrong? <laughs> you know, in the thick of things, people are blind to the grit in their eyes. Yet they can always feel it scratch. Mm. Want the answer? I'll give it to you. <laughs> the whole thing is just fate playing a cruel joke on us. Right. Newsflash! Panacone's Charmony Festival has entered its countdown phase. Oh the boy. singer Robin, famous throughout the cosmos, oh has announced boy. in a recent press conference that she will release a new album for the festival. It's for Mikhail. And for the future of Panacone. Come with me, everyone. Let's deal with these thugs first. Then we'll talk about how to deal with you. Be afraid. Look here. It's a bird. Look, a bird. I want to hear more of Miss Robin's story. Do you know her, Miss? Let me tell you all a secret. This bird knows Robin. It knows all about her. During that disaster, Robin couldn't hear anything except for the loud ringing in her ears. She knew that her mother was singing to her. She could see her mother's lips moving. She could feel her mother's breath. You will be safe and sound. She could hear that silent wish. One day, you'll step onto an even bigger stage. Even more people will hear you sing, and they'll sing with you. No, they'll sing with both of us, brother. Right, both of us. She wanted to spread that wish through song. And weave in even more wishes. But behind the beautiful sounds, there were noises of disharmony. Sounds of every form encircled her. The gazes of many followed her. She thought about fleeing, but something always stopped her. The singer could never turn her back on her audience or herself. The self that others protected, 
I wanted to protect others. That others forgave. I wanted to forgive others. I wanted to make her wishes come true. The self that wanted to make others' wishes come true. For every self, for every wish, she couldn't give up. Miss, I also want to sing on stage and sing for Miss Robin. Can my wish come true? Of course it can. Let's start now. The songs you sing, she will absolutely love them. Thank you, Miss Robin. I want to be a doctor. I want to keep singing when I grow up. The fighting's almost over. <sighs> Brother, our wish is slowly coming true. This is the end of our interview. It is reported that Miss Robin has now left for Penacony. Dear friends, we hope to see you again on the planet of festivities. <laughs>